It's April 21st, 2016, 9.40 a.m. The happy home of three is quiet and peaceful. Little Alice is at school. Patton Oswalt quietly puts a mug with his wife Michelle's favorite coffee on the bedside table. Michelle is still asleep. She's snoring. She's so tired, Oswald thinks. She's been working frantically in the past few days to make a headway on her new true crime book. Oswald leaves the bedroom to run a few errands. Three hours later, he checks in on Michelle again. She's not breathing. All Oswald can do is scream and throw up. That was the second worst day in the life of actor and comedian Patton Oswald. The worst one was when he had to look into a seven-year-old daughter's eyes and tell her that she will never see her mommy again. How does one come back to life from losing their soulmate? Everyone's story is unique, but genius and insightful comedian Patton Oswalt has a lesson or two to share. His wife died at the age of 46. Patton's world was shattered and would never be the same without his beloved. Today on Rumor Juice, we will tell you the real story of how Oswalt dealt with grief of losing his beloved wife. He says he was struck twice by the lightning of love, but had to face a lot of backlash for betraying his first wife's memory too soon. Don't forget to subscribe to Rumor Juice's YouTube channel for more stories like this one. Arguably, Patton Oswalt is the more famous spouse. The 51-year-old has won multiple awards for his stand-up routines and been in everything from Seinfeld, Parks and Recreation, Veep, and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to Blade, Trinity. Yeah, Oswalt and his first wife, Michelle McNamara, made quite a pair. They met at one of Oswalt's stand-up performances in LA. The comedian told that evening's crowd that his weakness is Irish women. After the show, a woman approached him and remarked that the bit about Irish girls was nice. Oswald was so stunned by her beauty that he couldn't muster a response and almost let the stranger walk away. Luckily, he managed to get her number. And yes, she grew up in an Irish-American family. It was love pretty much immediately for me. I think it took a few months for her, Oswald recalled. Quite soon after their first meeting, Michelle moved in with him. How'd you propose? I took her to Aquavit in New York and I called the chef ahead of time and I had him make a, like a, this really intricate chocolate dessert box that when you open it, then the ring was inside of it. That's, That's classic. That's wonderful. And <laughs> did she immediately say? Yeah, she said yes. A renowned actor and comedian and a true crime writer and journalist. Imagine the conversations they must have had at their dinner table. Parents to their precious girl, Alice, Patton and Michelle were successfully juggling family life and their careers. McNamara was obsessed with unsolved crimes. She ran a website where she covered breaking stories and unsolved cases. She was eagerly looking for clues and angles that police could have missed. Oswald supported and understood his wife's passion. He says that Michelle was driven by her writer and humanitarian side. We have all this technology. We have all these clues. We have all this insight. Why is this person not caught? And I think that ended up being something that really intrigued her. Michelle McNamara was particularly interested in the string of crimes that happened in California between 1976 and 1986. She called the unidentified murderer and rapist the Golden State Killer, and the name stuck. It perfectly captured California's duality. Bright sunshine often plays a setting to grim real life scenarios. So she came up with Golden State Killer and a couple of the the homicide cops, I remember, were saying, oh, thank God you came up with that name. McNamara dived headfirst into the terrifying mystery of the man who took so many lives and was responsible for his victim's physical and emotional scars. Little did the happy couple know where Michelle's investigation would lead her. She made a breakthrough in the case, thanks to which the FBI were about to reopen it. Michelle was immensely stressed and exhausted. Moreover, she had no idea that her health suffered further due to an undiagnosed heart condition. In her vulnerable state, the writer took a mixture of prescription drugs. The combination of the drugs and the treacherous illness proved to be fatal. She didn't wake up the next morning. When Patton Oswalt came in with his wife's morning coffee, this was the last time he saw her breathing. The cause of death was many things, Oswalt admits. But Michelle's lethal level of empathy in her certainly made her weaker and allowed all the other stuff to happen. Michelle's death put a dreadful task before Oswald. I looked at my daughter and destroyed her world, he recounted. I had to look at this little girl that was everything to me and take everything from her. The summer of 2016 turned into a nightmare for the Oswalds, the father and daughter. Oswald started treating himself as if he was already dead. Grief, he said, makes depression look like a fourth grade bully compared to Jason Statham. I'll be like waiting for, like, I, you know, I, I was waiting for a, a, an app 
to update. And I don't know why, but then I started crying, <laughs> thinking there's, un there, there's apps on her phone that will never update again. Alice became her dad's sole reason for existing. And what was most scary was, after about a month of it, I didn't care that I didn't know what to do next. I was just gonna, I was, I was trying to make myself this painless android. The actor admitted that, if not for Alice, he most likely would have turned into a poorly functioning, binge-eating alcoholic. Thanks to his little girl, Oswald had a reason to get up, make breakfast, and take care of her. That summer, Oswald made several heartfelt and raw posts on social media. It's 102 days later, and I can confidently say I have reached a point where I'm crawling, which, objectively, is an improvement. Maybe 102 days later, I'll be walking. A bit later, Oswald started cautiously making plans about the day he would start telling jokes, writing, and filming again. Indeed, part of his journey to healing was Oswald returning to a stand-up comedy routine and publicly discussing the loss of the woman he loved. Another part of the healing journey was finishing his wife's book. Michelle made it possible by making multiple notes and saved thousands of the Golden State Killer-related files on her computer. Oswald says his wife didn't work on the book to gain recognition. She simply wanted the criminal behind the bars. I didn't finish the book. I corralled people around me, a fellow journalist, a, a friend of hers, uh -huh. a researcher friend of hers, her publisher. We managed to structure the book and make it make sense. Like the actor himself puts it, in comic book terms, I was married to a great crime fighter. A couple of months after the book's release, the Sacramento County Sheriff's Department announced they had captured a primary suspect, 72-year-old United States Navy veteran and former police officer, Joseph James D'Angelo. The trial is still ongoing, but D'Angelo faces either life without parole or death if convicted. You did it, Michelle, even though the cops are never gonna say it, but your book helped get this thing closed. Michelle McNamara was a loving wife, an amazing mother, and she had an unparalleled mind. Thanks to the light she shed on a 42-year-old case, the victim's families may finally know some peace. Patton Oswalt has found his peace, too. Some say he has moved on too soon, but only Patton knows the price he paid for allowing himself to live fully again. Surely, memories of Michelle will always, always have a place in his heart. After her death, her own words helped Oswald survive. She didn't believe in the saying, everything happens for a reason. Michelle's motto was, if you want reason, if you want some grace in the world, be kind. The only reason and grace we have coming is whatever you put out there. This April, Oswald sent a lovely message to his wife, who would have celebrated her 50th birthday. I hope wherever you are, there's good coffee, a strong Wi-Fi connection, and endless mysteries for you to crack. Not a full year after Michelle passed away, Patton felt the jolt of lightning he felt with Michelle once again. His friend threw a dinner party. Patton was invited but couldn't make it. The next day, he got a message from someone who did attend the dinner, actress, voice artist, and psychologist, Meredith Salinger. She teased him about missing some amazing lasagna. Patton and Meredith started talking online. For three months, the two communicated via Facebook messages before setting up a face-to-face -face meeting. Oswalt calls it a very Victorian-like exchanging letters kind of romance. They'd managed to discuss some really deep personal stuff. Everything, really. Life, politics, books. And by the time they met in person, Oswalt was head over heels for Meredith. I was so head over heels. Was it the and word then, lasagna that really got you going? <laughs> fine, yeah, it was, it was, it was lasagna. It was It's fine. something about lasagna. Carbs! <laughs> In his fresh stand-up routine called I Love Everything, Oswald shares the one important lesson he'd learned. If you find love, run toward it. And that's exactly what he did. After, after Michelle passed, you found love again. Yes, uh, I, I did. I, I met uh, this amazing uh, woman uh, named Meredith Salinger, who is here, yeah. right here in the front row. There she is. He and Meredith Salinger married in November 2017. Patton said his experience was like an evolution, a huge step from all the darkness towards the strength and ability to feel joy again. Meredith was a beacon he had to reach for. He says of Meredith, it's almost like getting hit by lightning twice, that the statistical odds are so insane. I met someone just as, if not even more extraordinary than Michelle and this woman Meredith Salinger and fell in love with her. Equally important is the fact that Meredith and Oswald's daughter Alice got along swimmingly. Alice served as the flower girl at their wedding. The new and strong family union doesn't let criticism creep into their lives and ruin their happiness. Always creepy to me that you just ditched your ex-wife and moved on so fast. 
Not exactly something you expect to hear on the day of your one-year anniversary with your beloved wife. And yet, Oswald and Salinger have to face these no-name, faceless opinions every day. 50-year-old Salinger fiercely defends her husband and genuinely appreciates Michelle McNamara. If you think that her and Oswald got together against Michelle's family's will, think again. Meredith says Michelle's family and friends have been nothing but supportive of Oswald's happiness. I think for Patton, having met and found love after over a year of intense therapy and openly grieving and dealing with his pain, I am grateful to be the one who helps him climb out of the depths of grief and find some joy again, Meredith says. What is most important for both Meredith and Patton is that Alice is very happy. She has just celebrated her 11th birthday, and yeah, she's a preteen now. When Michelle was Alice's mom, Alice was three, four, five. She was still a little kid, Oswald says. And now, both Meredith and I are like, you have responsibilities, you have chores. So Alice, even if begrudgingly, is learning to be a teenager, like all teenagers and loving families do. I feel like I'm only living this life. I don't owe anyone else anything else, Pan Oswald says bravely. Words to live by, or not?